Their season may be over, but the future is bright for the Atlanta Dream. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hi there and happy Tuesday to you. I am Howard Meddahl, founder and editor of The Next, where you can find reporting about all 12 WNBA teams and across the world of women's basketball 24-7, 365 at thenexthoops.com. The great Gabriella Lewis joins us in a minute. She is doing incredible work. She covered the Atlanta Dream. I'm very excited that she's going to be covering the SEC for us this college basketball season. Uh, But you can support her and all the people who are doing this work by being a subscriber to the next $9 a month, $72 a year. We even have a giveaway going on right now. If you become an annual subscriber paid, you are entered for a chance to win a Jackie Young autographed basketball cards really enjoy it and for those of you listening i'm so grateful that you make us your first listen every day here at locked on women's basketball where we talk about the women's game every single weekday so we've got to talk clearly about the atlanta dream have a lot to get into Uh, some interesting things happening over the course of the final weekend missing tip hayes and gabrielle lewis of course on top of it was great reporting there but there's bigger picture stuff to be talking about too about the off season ahead and about where things stand for this dream franchise that from my perspective had the best possible season it could have but Gabriella, so glad you're here with us. And take us through first that final weekend, what your thoughts were going into it and how you think it turned out relative to where the Dream are as a franchise. Well, first, thanks for having me. And absolutely, that that last weekend was dramatic, um, as things are in the W often. Um, so the Dream played back-to-back the New York Liberty, first at home on Friday and then away uh, on Sunday. And these were do-or-die games. Um, they basically, you know, they could have they could have clinched a playoff spot with one, but really two would have been good. Um, they lost on Friday, uh, were down 20 at one point, came back almost, but couldn't quite finish it off. And then uh, Sunday, I was going to the game of true do or die. If they don't win this, they will not clinch a playoff spot. And, um, you know, something like 15 lead changes back and forth and back and forth. And uh, unfortunately, they couldn't, unfortunately for the dream, they couldn't pull it out. But uh, that ended their season. Um, However, like you said, the future is bright for the dream. I don't think anyone really expected them even to get close to a playoff spot. So um, you can't really be truly sad about it because uh, now they've got some, some even brighter future in the lottery and other things. My perspective is you probably didn't want to make the playoffs if you're the Atlanta Dream this year, just from a big picture perspective. And I guess you can argue it back and forth. You could say, you know, look, you get playoff experience. Ryan Howard gets the opportunity to play in those games. For me, it's kind of twofold. One, like you said, it's as close to making the playoffs as it's possible to to do without making them. You think Mm -hmm. about that. That three that Natasha Howard of the New York Liberty hits with just over a minute to go, Atlanta's within one point. That's the shot you want. Natasha Howard's gotten better as a three-point shooter, but that's, if you think about it, everyone on the Liberty, who do you want shooting threes? Basically, Howard's at the bottom of the list. Right. That misses. Atlanta has the ball back on New York's home floor with a minute to go down one. So you're that close. And then you add into it, I just don't have any real worries that Ryan Howard isn't going to step forward in a playoff game. I I know there are some rookies, some young players who might struggle with that. Ryan Howard seems different to me. Does it seem that way to you? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what I keep saying is Ryan Howard's a generational talent and other folks have told me this as well. And, you know, there's something really, really special about her. And I think she often, you know, she's, she's still young. There's still times where she's got room to grow, but I think she's going to be a really important clutch player, a really important comeback player, and ultimately a really important playoff player um, for years to come. And, you know, I think Atlanta's going to do everything they can to keep her, keep her in the A. Mm-hmm. I, I think also 
it's a little hard to know just how efficient Ryan Howard's going to be once she has offensive weapons around her. Totally. It, I, I mean, it, it's uh, one WNBA front office person said, I'm just excited to see what Ryan Howard does in this lead when she's not double teamed on every possession. So <laughs> that I think would be really interesting in and of itself. But Atlanta as a whole, just, you know, coming off of a year that bottom line, I and, and I submitted my votes officially. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to reveal my rookie of the year was Ryan Howard. It was harder than I thought it was going to be in June, July, uh, simply because Melissa Smith really had a terrific year. And Shakira Austin was better by the game. But mm -hmm. just in terms of the total lift and what Ryan Howard was able to do, I thought she had to be the one in the same way that Tanisha Wright was my coach of the year. Well, you know, if you are a building franchise, it's hard to do better than having your rookie coach in a position to win coach of the year. And I think, I think coach T has a real opportunity. Although I, my one, it's a minor quibble is calling her coach T is complicated in a lead with Mike Tebow. I, know. I don't know exactly what to do about that. I and mean, maybe they may have to have a playoff series just to determine who has that nickname. Um, exactly. But, you know, those two, those two things along with, the fact that the Dream finished fifth in defensive rating in the lead, 99.8 uh, points per 100, uh, I, I think is significant. What are kind of the biggest takeaways for you out of this season? Yeah, I mean, I think you've touched on it. Coach Wright and Ryan Howard, I think, are the biggest things. I mean, they don't finish anywhere near the playoff race without those two. I mean... Mm -hmm. I think Ryan Howard, like I've talked about, is is a really, really special player. And Coach Wright, I just wrote a feature on her. I mean, she is the best of the best. And I think she comes in after, you know, she's really only coached professionally for two, or she's only coached professionally for two years. And then she comes in and really just brings this group together. And in the opposite of what it was last year, there's a lot of love in that locker room and people enjoy each other and they have got chemistry on the court. And, you know, I think the things that I, when I was writing about Coach Wright is that she really brings accountability into everything she does. And in post-game media, when she feels like it's her fault, I've seen her do it. She she says, this is my fault. There's something wrong that I'm doing. And when she doesn't feel like her players are competing hard enough, she talks about that. And she says, you know, I, I in a, in a game that they lost to Minnesota a couple weeks ago, she said, my team didn't compete tonight. I built my whole career on competing. So it's embarrassing to me. I take this personal. And, you know, I think there's something really special between both Ryan and Tanisha, as well as also Nas you've got in there. There's all these rising talents. Um, and so, you know, I think the future is, is so bright. And as much as, you know, Dream fans are sad. They're in my Twitter mentions frequently talking about not making a playoff series. You know, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of excitement to be had. And you've also got Dan Patterdover, which in my opinion is one of the best of the best to, you know, be of the executives in this league. Um, and so I think there's really good personnel they already have. And then I also think that they're an attractive target for free agents. Um, and in my opinion, a free agency or something bigger is, is kind of imminent. It There's a lot in there, and I, and I want to get to each of them in turn. Uh, we should probably talk about Nas. Nas, of course, a guest on the show yeah. earlier this season as well. Uh, but I always enjoy taking a victory lap, and I'm, I'm going to take one right now because dating back to Nas Hillman's collegiate career, I have pointed out to all of you, that yes, she is height-wise undersized to play as a bid in the WNBA. You have to look at the reach. You have to look at the wingspan. Someday, hopefully soon, we live in a world where there is a combine, where these numbers are out <laughs> there, where it's not just basically Debbie Antonelli going somewhere with a tape measure. Right. And so that you just had to cover her. You just had to see her. In real time, I saw her against Melissa Smith uh, back in December at Mohegan Sun. It was just like, no, of course, she's going to compete. She's going to be able to be a big who did that. She got better, I feel like, as the season went along. What do you think Nas's medium-term future is in this league? What What is her role? What can it be? 
Yeah, well, I think she's going to be a really special player. You know, I think she's already started, you know, she starts the last third of the season and basically every single game she has really important moments on the defensive and the offensive end, you know, multiple double doubles. Like this is, this is really important. Uh, She's a really important player. And so I think her future is, she's talked to me. My first piece I did here while covering the dream was a feature on Nas. And she said to me is, I want to be here to like make this program grow and to be an attractive place for other folks to come and she talked to me about how when she showed up at Michigan it was still kind of a rising star you know and and things were were not um as big as they were when she left and you know they still have room to grow but she felt the same way about the dream right that they're kind of in a similar trajectory and she likes that like you know kind of being a pioneer of a program and so her and mine are really good friends so my opinion is if they've got an ECA in it they'll hopefully stay together but I think if the dream will keep Nas this year at least this year because there's so much potential there. And I think she could be a really important part of their defensive. And then also, you know, the more she grows, the more offensive production she'll have. And like you said, yeah, she's undersized, but she takes on um, basically anyone and and she does a good job of it. You know, I I was talking to her mid season about, you know, covering Brianna Stewart and she was like, yeah, you know, it was tough, but she handled it. Right. And so I think she really has a bright, bright future. And I'm very high on Nas Hillman stock. Likewise. And, and, and so bright. So yeah. she's going to maximize her talents, uh, you know, at every turn. It, it's hard to find a, a two-way star like that, um, a two-way potential star in the making. Um, but really, when it comes to two-way stars, I think the one who sets the standards uh, is over at Built Bar. Uh, because Built Bar yes. has, you know, obviously the tremendously delicious bars. They have these cookie dough puffs. I can't go anywhere, and this is not an exaggeration, anywhere without my mom saying, make sure you don't get hungry, make sure you take a built bar with you. And so she emphasizes that at every turn. And you say, okay, well, delicious, right? Well, you know, that's offense. Well, what's defense? 15 grams of protein and only 160 calories. So you've got the great taste. You've got the health aspect of it. Uh, My wife and younger daughter just went to Legoland today. What did they grab on the way out the door? Built Bars, right? So go to Built.com, be like us, and use promo code LOCKEDON15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-1-5. And get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKEDON15. And Gabriella, when people do that, who should they say sent them? Grandma Myrna, of course. That's correct. That's correct. So moving beyond Grandma Myrna into the Atlanta dream as a whole, they're not in the playoffs. They are now a lottery team. Let's say Aaliyah Boston were to become available. How does Aaliyah Boston fit on this team? And how long will it take Dan Padover to figure out who to draft if he gets that number one pick? (laughs) If you guess that everyone picked, I don't even think he has to think for a second. I mean, Aaliyah Boston is Aaliyah Boston. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think she fits in great. Aaliyah Boston should fit in great basically anywhere. She's uh, she's impressive, um, both offensively, defensively. I mean, she's, like I said about Ryan, a generational talent. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, no, I think if they get Aaliyah Boston, things are going to be really, really exciting. I mean, two number one draft picks. Um that's that's impressive right like seattle had that a couple years ago and their seattle's looking pretty good um so yeah we'll see that would be a, an exciting move for the dream do you feel as if the women's basketball world writ large owes it to you for it to happen that way just given your beats coming up here you know that that would be just just a perfect segue for you sec right into atlanta yeah i mean I would love that. And sure, I'll say it. Yeah, I think the universe does owe me that, right? Like, I deserve it. Come on. No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> Anyone who would do this lose that. So I, I think so, too. So let's talk about a player who is obviously a long-term been part of the Atlanta Dream, uh, but wasn't with them this weekend. And that's Tiffany Hayes. And you had some original reporting. You can go to the com and see that piece. Uh, it's worth your time. Again, I... I I cannot stress enough uh, how fantastic the work has been from you on the beat 
uh, this season, and you absolutely have killed it. But take us through. Tiffany Hayes was not there for the final weekend of the season. What happened and why? Yeah. So Thursday evening, um, the injury report goes out like normal. It says that Tiffany Hayes, Tiffany Hayes had been out for about five games already with a right ankle injury. Um, and then it says that she's continued to be out, but she's going to be out for an overseas commitment. Um, people are confused, myself included. I, I almost thought it was a mistake. Um, cool. Information from the team was not given on Thursday um, after, after asking. And then um, on Friday morning, I'd just gotten off of the plane um, and I get a Twitter notification that Tiffany Hayes, um, this was originally uh, by Anila Khan, who was the first person to report this, that Tiffany Hayes is in Turkey playing for the three by three um, Islamic solidarity games. Um, mm -hmm. And she's an Azerbaijani citizen. She has been since 2015, so she's playing for them. So that game that night, there is a game um, in Atlanta, and you know the first question that I ask Coach Wright at press is, you know, where is she, um, and sure. how long have y'all known about this? Because I think that was a huge question, right? She's right. out for an injury, but now she's playing overseas. What's mm -hmm. the deal? Coach Wright tells me that she respects uh, Tip's decision. And, you know, Coach Wright is a former player. She understands the lucrative opportunities overseas. Um, and she very much emphasized she respects it, but she didn't know until recently. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, that's in some shockwaves, at least over Twitter. Uh, people are are confused of why is why is Tiffany leaving. Um, after the game, after post-game media, I have an exclusive interview with Coach Tanisha Wright. And she clarifies to me that actually – she did know there was a possibility of it, but not until recently did she know it was, quote, actually happening. Hmm. Um, so, you know, that uh, kind of raises some questions. What's what's happening with that? I spoke with um, Tiffany's agent, Marcus Crenshaw, and he told me that during contract negotiations, it was talked about that she was going to be away some point later in the season because she's currently renewing her passport by playing in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. And also, um, Mr. Crenshaw clarify to me that it's unknown if she'll actually play in said games for the Islamic Solidarity Games, but she must be rostered on the team in order to renew that passport um, and therefore to renew her citizenship. Um, and again, this is all being done so that she can play future seasons overseas. Mm -hmm. You know, and also Mr. Crenshaw clarified to me um, multiple times that Tip is really sad that this has to happen. You know, she's been with the dream for 10 years. Like no one loves the dream more than Tiffany Hayes. Yeah. Um, and so I think this is, I think people can see this as a black and white situation, but in my opinion, it's really not like it's, it, it is tough, right? Like mm -hmm. women have to go overseas. Like we saw with the Brittany Griner situation. So on the forefront to make the money that they need and to make the money that will make them, um, you know, like, actual professional athletes in a lot of ways. And so this was something that was talked about during contract negotiations, apparently, um, and, and at least in, in a previous way from Coach Wright. And so, you know, it, it's a really tricky situation. And she wasn't there for those last two games. And, you know, Coach Wright talked about how tough that is. Tiffany brings a lot of leadership, a lot of heart on the bench, even when she's not playing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really tricky situation. And I think that's that's kind of my my thought on it. So I'm glad you, you pointed this out. And, and she has literally spent her entire career dating back to 2012 yeah. with the Atlanta Dream. And, and, I, and that's something I appreciated about your piece as well, is that it doesn't lay it out as here is the villain. I don't think there's a villain. I think there's a number of pieces to this. And, and the first, of course, is, uh, like you said, this league is better. I've, I've tweeted this out, I think, verbatim. This is a better league when Tiffany Hayes is in it. Totally. But, but when when can Tiffany Hayes be in it? When does she have to take care of her bottom line? She's into her 30s. You know, you have a right. finite amount. Even if we get to the point, and I know you and I have had sort of different discussions about this, where there's going to be a WNBA new media rights deal. It's going to change the mm -hmm. face of how players are paid. That shouldn't be the tail end or possibly after uh, Tiffany Hayes' career. So these, this is a group of players in a different situation and making sure that you're able to take care of your bottom line still matters. Now, that said, the WNBA cannot be in a position it's, you know, we talked a little bit off the air about it. Sometimes you look around the women's basketball landscape and you're like, oh, well, that's under construction. Like there's a big mm -hmm. hole where the kitchen ought to be. And 
somebody as important as Tiffany Hayes not being part of the final two games when the Atlanta Dream are playing for a playoff berth. It's not her her fault. It's not Atlanta's fault. It's not even the league's fault necessarily for failing to get to where they want to go. That takes time and you're building a business model and it's fundamentally different from the way players are paid overseas, but it does have to change. Tiffany yeah. Hayes has to be someone you can count on, not someone who shows up as international uh, duties on an injury report the night before two of the most critical games of the season. Right. And, and, you know, the dream season has ended, but and we don't know the timeline with Tiffany. That was something that I wasn't able to get from the team or from her agent, but you know, who knows if, if this, if they went into a series, right? Like that could also continue to be a problem. Um, and so I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's a tricky situation. Everyone has to make difficult decisions, but in an ideal world with elite, you know, this doesn't happen in the NBA, unfortunately. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's not, I'm not in the business of comparing these two, but ultimately we want it so that the W doesn't have to have issues like this. And, you know, we're going to see this with prioritization in a year, this is going to become a really hot topic issue. And, you know, who knows what the future is of a lot of, a lot of folks. A lot of people playing a game of chicken with this and it's, I've said this before, but just if I were the lead, I understand your media rights deals up in 2025. If there are any ways that you can find to get early cash in that allows salaries to go up as prioritization is coming through in 23 and 24, I don't know what ESPN's level of interest in. The comparison I've made, I know you are a baseball obsessive like I am, is you sign a player during his pre-arb years or his arb years, you buy out some of the arbitration seasons and what you get in exchange for early delivery of that money is a bit of a discount on the back end of some of those free agent seasons. Now, I recognize that some teams just trade the players away before they get even close to free agency. Um, I don't, I, I, I can't think of any uh, major league baseball team in particular I have in mind. I'm not sure if you can, um, but <laughs> that said, that is something I think that uh, we could have about the open <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, it hurts I, a little, but I hear you. <laughs> well, I, I, I do. By the way, like like my heart, like I felt that, like your reaction in real time to that. And I'm sorry. I hate that they right. do that to you. I hate yeah. that they, they shouldn't do that to anybody. Oh, but no. anyway, just like back back to like the actual lead topic, right? Like, why doesn't the WNBA do that? And, and, right. and I, I hope they're exploring it because – like you said, prioritization is coming here. For those who don't know, that means players must be here by day one of the regular season next year and day one of training camp in 2024. So yeah. it's coming. Those big decisions are coming. And, and Tiffany Hayes wasn't this year. And so, you know, what does that mean next year? And also to add to that, if they're not here by the first day, it's not that they're suspended. They are suspended. Or it's not that they're suspended for a couple of games. They're suspended right. for the entire season. Damn so. Play. That's, I mean, that's huge, right? If, if with these dueling different, um, you know, decisions. It's going to be fascinating. I, I'm really looking forward to reading, you know, upcoming about, um, you know, talking to players with exit interviews and what is ahead, but it's going to be a fascinating time for the dream. And like you said, it's not about comparison. It's not about compared to the NBA. It's you want your compelling players to be playing in the compelling games. That's just a yeah. basic when it comes to this regardless. So I, I do thank you for talking through and making uh, it clear what's going on in Atlanta all year here and as we go forward as well. I want to thank our listeners, of course, for making Lockdown Women's Basketball your first listen every day. Uh, I do want to point out to you, um, and this is really interesting to me, that um, there is apparently another professional basketball league operating right here in the United States today. Um, and it's called the National Basketball Association. Um, it is a men's basketball professional league. Um, I, I, is, is anyone talking about this? I know, and, and you wrote about this so well, about the vibes for the dream. Are there any vibes for the Hawks? Is that is that a thing going at the, uh, do I have the right, the Hawks? Yeah, I think it's the Hawks. You know, okay. I said this last time I was on here, but the only vibes I know about about the Hawks are those that sit courtside at WNBA games. So um, Trey Young was at the Seattle Storm game, the other Seattle Las Vegas game the other day. So that's all I could tell you. I'm not really familiar with this NBA. 
I listen, you know what? And what a smart move by Trey Young to do something like that gives yeah. him the opportunity to get better known in the basketball community. So good for him. You know, he has a chance if he still works at it to be, you know, Oklahoma's answer to Taylor Robertson, a uh, Robertson someday. Totally. Well. You know? Yeah. And, but, yeah. yeah, please. And what, sorry, can I just say one more thing about the dream? Mm. I just want to shout out Kia Vaughn. She is just mm. retired. Kia Vaughn has been in this league for 14 years. She's been a force on many different teams. Um, and she didn't just, she just announced her retirement. So just got to shout her out. I am, I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad we mentioned this before we go. I am an automaton as a reporter with no feelings or thoughts mm -hmm. of my own, Same. obviously, as, as are you. Um, but if I did have feelings, just the emotional feeling of somebody who played her heart out at Rutgers, who made herself a 14-year career, uh, she was not the most talented on any of her teams. It wasn't that she came with some elite, elite skill. What she did was hard work and a critical presence in the locker room. And that's why she played 14 years, was valuable, was just from a personal perspective. Anytime I wanted something explained to me, she was wonderful. I came away knowing more from covering her. I, I was Kia Vaughn, all the best. She was a real credit to this league from start to finish. Truly. Really glad, really glad that you mentioned that as well. So for those of you who are moving past Kia Vaughn season, you can listen to, of course, Locked On NBA latest news and rumors in the National Basketball Association in just 30 minutes every day. You know, once you're finished listening to Lockdown Women's Basketball, once you've consumed all the SEC women's basketball content, NBA will help get you to the next WNBA season. Well, those of you who aren't watching on YouTube, it's at underscore Gabriella Lewis with two L's, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-A-L-E-W-I-S. Follow her, learn her, a rising star in this business. I am Howard Meddahl, thanking you for being part of Lockdown Women's Basketball. We will be back with you tomorrow and every weekday. Happy Playoffs Eve, everybody. Have a wonderful day. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.